Broncos. Is this like goodwill game? Goodwill hunting? That's what they're doing? I don't, I don't know what they're trying to accomplish as it seems like the playoffs and their big sites for some sort of epic, deep playoff situation are rapidly evaporating. But they're one in four. They're going into Arrowhead, woof, to take on the number one seed in the AFC. It's all sort of quiet still on the Travis Kelsey front. Yeah, we're here in Taylor's making the trip, and she wasn't there last week. And I mean, what else sucks for the Vikings more, right? They can't get any love from, from anybody. They're the most distraught fan base of all time. And Taylor doesn't even show up. Well, she's likely to be in Kansas City, one of the best places to take in an NFL game for this one against Sean Payton and his boys, looking to do something, just a little bit of something here. So let's do this. Um, the latest is that Travis is practicing, but I feel like Andy Reid and, and – Gronk didn't give me a clear answer on this yesterday. I thought he would. But do we bubble wrap him? Do we rest him on a short week? It'll be a game time decision that he has to make. But if you look at this, um, and they should take care of business easily, handedly, pretty squarely, at the beginning even of this game, early. Um, Kansas City's winning games. It's fine. Their offense with Kelsey, a little nervous about them without Kelsey, but whatever. It's fine. But we can't just be fine in this AFC, right? Like the the, the Burrow and they're looking better. Like the, the Buffalo looks pretty good. This is the AFC. And if you look at what uh, that full screen just says, they've only scored 30 plus once this year. If you think about what they were doing last year on the road and two and to win their Super Bowl, their second one with Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey in the lot, like they were averaging 30 points a game. That was like normal behavior for them. It's not happening. It's not quite happening. So they're really good. But the key numbers, as you saw, dipped a little bit. So now they're taking facing this Broncos defense that's going to be a get-right game and launch them right right back into that 30-plus average world because what, are they going to drop 70 on them? I don't know. Vance Joseph, this Broncos defense cannot get it together. They're historic uh, struggles. And you got to think that for Balt, for the Broncos, it is just get in the good with the fan base. Win them over. Stop spiraling around the toilet bowl of the NFL with your own fans there who showed up in the sweltering heat at practice when I was there. Sean Payton knows what's up. He knows the opportunity in front of him on a short week to turn it around against a guy who does really well on short weeks uh, named Andy Reid. So let's get through this. Uh, if Kelsey plays or not, we'll see some chemistry, maybe develop some confidence be built on the Kansas City side with these young receivers uh, up against this historically bad defense. So with Denver, we're just we're goodwill hunting. That's it. That's the poster. We're we're just trying to buy some goodwill with our fans, the media group, all of that horrifying 15 game losing streak to the Chiefs, which is lingering still. It's being talked about a lot. We talked about it with Sean Payton when we were there in Denver, sweltering conditions in August. Here's what he had to say about that 2015 drought. We've got a lot of respect for Andy. I've known Andy for a long time. Certainly the Chiefs and, and what they've accomplished. And quite honestly. In our league, it's always funny how you, the first goal is to win the division. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in New Orleans, back then it was Tampa Bay, and we had to figure out a way to – and so, you know, the Raiders, the Chargers, the Broncos, you know, all of us are trying to get, get to that spot. That was August. The season is not going how Sean Payton thought that it would. I think hiring fans, Joseph, he wanted um, – some authority. He wanted some veteran leadership. He wanted somebody who's been there and done that before. It is simply not panning out. Gregory gone. Like, it just isn't what it was supposed to be. You have one of the best pieces defensively in the National Football League in Patrick Sertan. Like, he literally is one of the best players on the defensive side of the ball. It's just not working. And it probably isn't going to get righted tonight under the bright lights of Thursday night football. And eight years is a long-ass time, everybody. It's a long time. 2015 is a long time ago. Should we go in the Bill and Ted phone booth, like the red one for the British version here, and dial it up and hit you back to the last time there was success with Peyton Manning as the quarterback? Let's do it. Friend of friend of mine, Emmanuel Sanders, that was the dial up for the score. It was Peyton to him for the game-tying touchdown with seconds to go. Do we have it? There we go. Um, then on the next play from scrimmage, yeah, here it is. Okay, so this is Emmanuel Sanders, game-tied, fine. Then you have linebacker Brandon Marshall, like, pokes it away as we give it to is this Jamal Charles I love that Jamal Charles I, my gosh one of the best miss him yeah so there you go um so Bradley Roby scoops it and scores the Broncos game winning touchdown this was a shocking situation right so I'm showing this let's let's, let's bring it back let's look at manifest a little something let's drudge something up here at Arrowhead tonight because that would be great um and you know I'm glad when I was talking to coach that he brought up 
Tampa. He brought up comparing this to taking down Tom Brady, to not being afraid of a juggernaut, a Goliath, or whatever it is, because he found a way to do it better than anybody ever has done that. He found a way to take down an Aaron Rodgers in a week one game against the Saints uh, a couple of years ago. It played in Florida mysteriously because of a hurricane. There's so much that Sean Payton can do if he can get them going. Um, I don't know. Like, uh, coach and, uh, well, it's all on coach. It's true. Russell Wilson hasn't been bad. We depicted it yesterday. I'm glad to see, by the way, so many Broncos fans, media, coming and saying, thank you for talking about this. Thank you for talking about the fact that like, Russell Wilson has not been bad. Russell Wilson has not been the problem, and that's not what's being talked about um, right here. So that's what my thoughts on tonight's game. There's a lot of fun going on. You can get in on some of it, and we're going to talk now about elsewhere this weekend. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest Up and Adams content right on YouTube.